Well, good evening, my uh, fellow brothers and sisters who travel the astral path as myself and my guest here. I'm on tonight. I, uh, my name is Nate Bales, and you probably, eh, if you have seen me, it's, it's from the weekly podcast that I do with uh, EA Coetting over there at Become a Living God. And I had a special invitation to sit down with uh, probably the world's foremost authority on on astral projection. That is Robert Bruce, man. How you doing tonight? Good night. I'm doing great, thanks. <laughs> wouldn't be dead to quit. Excellent. Oh man, it is a it is a serious pleasure to be able to get sit down with you and just uh, break open all the aspects and angles of uh, the reality of astral projection only like you can that nobody else uh can bring to the table on this and i mean you have a you have a plethora of works behind you you have a legendary catalog you got energy work astral dynamics uh the practical psychic self-defense handbook and then of course uh, mastering astral projection and that's just, those are just the books out there. I mean, you go to uh, astraldynamics.com and I mean, it just, you just pick up running where you left off with the books. You got, you got the video courses and you got the very special one coming up on Raising Kundalini, man. I'm excited about it. And um, I know it's going to be, it, it is humanity's first official guide to a full Kundalini awakening. And if you could... For those who aren't familiar with Kundalini, could you give people just a basic breakdown on, on what Kundalini is and the uh, the mechanics involved in it? Kundalini, that's a big question. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Kundalini is an energy which is inherent to all human beings, um, which, when triggered, its purpose is to evolve a human being to a higher level of consciousness. Now, this is set up this way because human beings, if you're going to live a, uh, uh, a life as a programmed robot or live a simple life, you don't need all of that <clears throat> act energy activity inside of your chakras and your mind. But if you push the envelope, um, you will, through, I mean, intellectual activity can trigger spontaneous. <coughs> so again, intellectual activity can trigger spontaneous Kundalini rising, as happened to Carl Jung, the famous transpersonal psychologist, had a big Kundalini experience. And he wrote extensively on Kundalini and the chakras, by the way, uh, but not many people know about it. Uh, there's a little book out there called the Secret of the Golden Flower. It's a small book. You can still get it. And more okay. than 50% of it is a commentary by Jung on this. It's a very special book uh, worth having. And, um, of course, other people like Gopi Krishna had a spontaneous awakening through spiritual devotional work. And none of these people really understand it. But uh, I, of course, um, raised my Kundalini uh, many, many years ago and uh, worked out how to do it myself, uh, which is uh, a part of the uh, path I'm on where you have to work things out for yourself. It's called the way of the master. And, um, or you can call it various other things. But um, back to what Kundalini is, to understand what it can do for you. <clears throat> if you look at the uh, ancient Egyptians, if you look at Egyptology, if you look at the... Uh, statue of the sphinx is the most famous one and there's a lot of other smaller sculptures uh, of the mm -hmm. sphinx and like the sphinx and you will find that the sphinx originally had a cobra a rampant cobra coming up through the forehead of the sphinx statue of course it's broken yeah. right now <clears throat> but you can see it in the artwork and some of the other sculptures around and if you look at the uh, statues of pharaohs and then you know, the queens and other famous people of the uh, um, time of the pyramids, you will also find pictures and statues of them with a, a raised cobra coming out of the forehead, out of the third eye chakra. And you will also see a, um, an artifact called Uraeus, uh, I think it's called, and that is a golden um, headband which 
um, fits around the head, and on the front of that you have a rampant cobra again. You may have seen that in movies and things like that. But yeah. that tells me that the um, ancient Egyptian pharaohs and that knew all about Kundalini, um, because that is, I mean, that is perfect. I mean, if you want a, a ruler that is going to be an absolute genius, then you need race Kundalini because it releases genius. If you have a scientist or an artist, you can release genius for science, for artwork, for any endeavor, whatever your interests are, you will develop genius in if you release Kundalini. That's how it is. I think Kundalini goes back to the origins of humanity. Now, and I think, I mean, they've tracked humanity back, you know, having Stone Age tools and that, I think, you know, 20 million years or more. You know, we go back quite a long way. But um, if you work with Kundalini like I have, you start to understand this is way too sophisticated an energy mechanism to have developed in that, the length of time we've had civilization on this planet. I have to say, either humanity is hundreds of millions of years older and we've had many previous advanced civilizations, um, or <coughs> uh, we may have some extraterrestrial ET DNA spliced into us because that would, you know, maybe hum humans are hybrid. We have, uh, yeah. <coughs> if you have an ancient ET race that has Kundalini uh, active inside of them, then if you splice those genes into a human, you then transfer that a very sophisticated energy body, including the third eye, Kundalini, and everything else that goes with it. But uh, it's just way, if you look carefully at the chakras and work with them, they're way too complex to have evolved to the level of sophistication they are in such a short time. And particularly Kundalini and what it does. I mean, in comparison, when I say it evolves your consciousness to the next level, I mean, this is the difference between the level between, let's say, a house dog and you, and a, a, a human being. That's the difference. Um, yeah. That particularly opens up your creativity. And, uh, I, I first raised Kundalini probably close to 30 years ago um, when I uh, did it. And I've done it countless times since. And uh, this is, goes against common knowledge about Kundalini, of course, because Kundalini, according to the traditions and urban mythology, is a one-and-done kind of deal. You raise Kundalini, you awaken it, and you're done. That's it. You're the finished product. But you're not. Uh, it Once you take that shift in consciousness, you enter a whole new level of energy and psycho-spiritual development. It's a whole new level. And, of course, there are many, many levels of Kundalini. Uh, this Kundalini develops from the base level to much higher and higher and higher levels. And, two, when you get to some of the higher levels here, you even, apart from genius and uh, various abilities and that, you also unlock varying levels of immortality as well, um, ranging from spiritual immortality, where, which means you will continue as a spirit as you, uh, to even physical immortality, which I think is possible. That's next yeah. on my to-do list now. And that also connects directly to taking my physical body into the astral dimension and returning. Because if you look at the implications of doing that, if you go into the astral dimension, take your physical body with you, in the astral dimension you can shape shift. If you turn into a raven and then come back to physical reality, you will come back as a raven. There's a lot of uh, historical data, a shamanic history that supports that as how the Sarah Shaman does it. But now if you go into the astral and you shape, let's say you're 60 years old and you shape shift back to a 20 year old form, body image, and then come back into the physical again, you're 20 years old. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> and there are higher levels beyond that. Um, even up to levels where I believe that you cannot be killed. That's amazing. And uh, I mean, 
I'm excited about this because nobody else has a course. I mean, that that uh, that is going to be able to walk you through having never had a Kundalini experience to all the proper steps of being able to raise Kundalini, and then showing the the, the gateways on how to apply this and and how to run with it, and uh, and the pitfalls that that come along with it. I know it's. It is a very powerful uh, current to be raising inside yourself, and uh, I mean, as as a lot as there's, as well as there being a lot of positive ways to have, to apply this, I know that there's there's a lot of a, a peril that comes along with it, and to have that guidance from somebody who's who's been able to raise Kundalini almost a hundred times. I mean, Jesus Christ, man! I mean, this course is where it's at, and and uh, people of anybody watching this video, man, is. Uh, is in for a big surprise to be able to get this course, and I know it's 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 coming out before too long. I think uh, about a month away from the time we're doing this interview. I think it's about December eighteenth. So it's it's going to be on people's doorsteps here uh, before they know it. And how long have you been putting this thing together for? Uh, two years. Yeah. Wow. Two years working this, and there's a lot of um, it's a big learning curve with the video and the audio as well because. Uh, this comprised of streaming, online streaming uh, video and downloadable content as well, you know, download the videos. And, um, <clears throat> but yeah, doing that at home in my home studio here, of course, I had to learn all about video cameras and video editing. And fortunately, my son, who is uh, Jesse, who's uh, also raised Kundalini, by the way, my son's and my apprentice, um, he raised it on the creative level when he was uh, 14 and living with me. And uh, wow. he's the purple strobe guy. I've written about it in a few places. But he, uh, he's, um, uh, he has degrees in multimedia and, uh, and things like that and fine art. And uh, he's, a, he's a whiz at cameras, video cameras and video editing and audio and stuff like that. So he's my cameraman and director and, and, and cohort and that all, and son all rolled up into one link package. And, uh, but yeah. As for the, um, this, one thing you should not expect in this course here, do not expect a lesson in Eastern esoteric cultures and language and terminology. This is based on direct personal experience. Got a little bit in there about, you know, Egyptology and sure. stuff like that to connect to, um, to show where it comes from. But the knowledge in there about all the mistakes not to make and all the pitfalls, I made them. That's how I know. Don't do that. Just don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Um, and by learning solutions and, um, you know, to these things, I can guide people uh, quite effectively. Now, you try and find somebody in the world, particularly even an author or a teacher of Kundalini in that, and uh, good luck. I mean, there's a few people around who've had spontaneous Kundalini risings, including people with no spiritual interest at all. But um, I often at my um, workshop, live like workshops and that, I get advanced teachers of Kundalini Yoga and that coming along. And they're like coming with dark glasses on and that, you know, shh. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they want to learn how to raise Kundalini because they know it all from books and their traditions and that. But what a lot of these people are missing is the personal experience and the experience that comes from working with somebody that's actually done it. I mean, yes. these people are as rare as hen's teeth. I mean, I have no doubt that there's probably, I don't know, hundreds of them in the uh, in India and China and places, Tibet and places like that. But all of these people in the traditions are sworn to secrecy, often on pain of death. They are not allowed to discuss this or disseminate knowledge about raising Kundalini, uh, particularly the Westerners. Because knowledge is power, and the traditions, like any religion, wants to hold on to that power. And there's also the duty of care, where, I mean, typically this knowledge is only passed on from master to student orally. You will tell a student when they're ready, bits of the time. Um, now, fortunately, I worked out how to raise Kundalini myself, because I'm absolutely just wonderful and gifted in that. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the truth is, I had a lot of help from a master, um, a spirit master, 
uh, who was uh, and some angels sort of kind of guided me through this. And the mm-hmm. reason I I give to this, why I've been helped to do this, is because our world is in a pretty sorry state at the moment, and has been for a very long time. And the 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 logic here is why I'm doing this, why I'm sharing this. Every person that successfully raises Kundalini is going to make a big difference in the planetary energies which we produce, the vibration of the planet and the vibration of our civilization. Now, if I can get dozens or hundreds of people with raised Kundalini out there, this is going to seriously affect the vibrational level of our planet and our species, which will alter our reality for the better. That's, that, that is an amazing endeavor in itself. I mean, on top of uh, the enlightenment that, uh, that you're bringing to people on this. And it's, and that's why I'm excited okay. that you're putting it out. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Robert. I say enlightenment, illumination. I just had to comment where they came from. Um, yeah. Enlightenment. When you achieve a more advanced level of consciousness, which you can do through a lot of a lot of meditation and training and that and through Kundalini, the your mind's eye inside of your head when you close your eye is your is your mind's eye space. It's another dimension which is all yours, and light starts coming down from above and it starts starts to light up, and the more spiritually advanced you are, the brighter that light gets and the more activity you get in your mind's eye. Uh, it, this is what's meant by illumination, enlightenment. But back to the uh, Kundalini again, um, and the traditions, they are missing something in the West, which uh, when a lot of Eastern knowledge was brought from um, into the West a couple hundred years ago, it was translated into English, of course. Now, the way some of the words and concepts did not translate very well. And for example, the way of moving energy in these Eastern traditions, the only word we had available for that was visualization. So everything in the Western spiritual New Age movement is based upon visualize this and visualize that. Now, of course, at least three quarters of people cannot visualize in any kind of visual way. A small percentage, it's probably five or ten percent of people when they imagine something, which is visualization, when they imagine yeah. something in their mind's eye, they actually see it. And that being able to see what they're imagining is related to a clairvoyant ability. It is an ability most people don't have. Now, of course, when you have teachers and authors that, that can do that, they, it's a given. They just assume that everybody else can do this if they work at it. But, of course, they can't. But when you yeah. explain to everybody that visualization is imagination, which is usually non-visual, but anybody can do it. Even the smallest child is an expert of imagination. And if you imagine something, you can imagine a complex scenario down to every hair on a person's head with the smells and touches and sounds as perfectly as if you were really seeing them. But you won't normally see that in your mind's eye unless you have a bit of clairvoyant ability awakening. It's kind of like being in a lucid dream where you can uh, dreamscape on the inside of your mind's eye. If you imagine there's a big sun flower in front of you, you actually see it in your mind's eye. But most yeah. people don't have that. Being able to have that ability to to uh, utilize your imagination, I mean, that is that is the, uh, the ethereal link into... Uh, into this, into the spirit world, and being able to, to uh, transform the overlying template into reality. And uh, uh, you, I mean, you really hit on it when you talk about children. I mean, children uh, can can visualize and have such an uninhibited imagination uh, before they're programmed to uh, by the adult community to say, "Ah, oh, this is." don't think about that or you're too crazy or, or, uh, you know, you need to concentrate on this over here or that's irrational. And it's, um, you can really look at from a different vantage point on how social programming really stifles, uh, the human being's imagination to be able to, uh, 
to visualize and to just let go and to hear things clear audiently and uh, have well, that you, visual key. <laughs> you hit it on the head there. I mean, <clears throat> most the majority of adults have a huge amount of self-imposed limitations on themselves. And this is just one of them. <clears throat> but understanding what visualization is and what it is not, of course, it's visualization. If you start to see things, then you're developing a, a modicum of clairvoyance with that. But the next step of understanding that is uh, how to move energy, which the system I call body awareness tactile imaging, because you need to use your tactile senses to move energy and to stimulate chakras and to pull energy up through your body. It makes everything work. Now, you combine imagination and tactile imaging, and then you have what you need because um, tactile imaging moves the energy. Visualization, imagination shapes that energy into a different form. You can apply qualities. You can apply elemental qualities, earth, fire, air, and water to a tactile imaging energy work action. Uh, you can create energy tools like a blowtorch, a spray gun using water, air, fire, uh, earth even, and you can do all kinds of things. And it allows you to work on the energy body for removing blockages and attachments and working on your chakras to free them up and actually get them working. Because, um, you know, if you apply body awareness tactile imaging combined with a little imagination, to a uh, major chakra, you will activate it. No two ways about it, it will activate, sometimes very noticeably. Now, it takes me um, about five minutes to get somebody who doesn't know anything about body awareness tactile imaging, it takes me less than five minutes to teach people how to do this and get them actually feeling energy. Less than five minutes. My record's three minutes. <laughs> wow. And that was in the, I actually went into an RBC bank in Canada once, and there were two young women at the teller because one was a trainee. And they always asked, you know, what do you do? And blah, blah, blah. I'm an author. I write this. What is it about? And it start getting into consciousness. I said, look, it's easier to show you. Put out your hands. And both girls put both hands out quite small. And the exercise I do is I put my hands over theirs and I brush my fingertips up and down your ha their hands from like fingertips to wrists on both of them. Uh -huh. And uh, I do that for about 30 <coughs> seconds and I tell instruct them to memorize what that feels like. Memorize the touch that I'm causing in your nerve. You can feel that. And when I stop physically doing it, I want you to continue moving the feel backwards and forwards from fingertips to wrists. So I did that for like 30 seconds and then I get them to continue moving the feel and they're doing it like that. Now, the trick of teaching this is to continue doing that. Whatever you're teaching, you do it yourself. So I'm moving energy backwards and forwards and down through my hands. There's a charismatic transfer that they pick it up faster that way, a lot faster. And within a minute, they go, well, the hands are tingling and twitching and stuff like that. And one of them has got a throbbing brow center. The other one's got the heart chakra going nuts and that. And uh, after, you know, after that, say, what do we do now? I says, well, get a copy of my book. I'm going to go, bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. It's a, strange, <laughs> a strange bank. All of the tellers and management were Reiki masters and into Reiki and things like that. It was an unusual bank. That branch, I mean. Even looking back on, um, on my own path and, and career and, and walk with the, in the magical field, I picked up a lot of things, and they don't give you a lot of the prerequisites on how to get into this, which, which I really have endless appreciation to you for because you bring a layman's terms approach to energy work onto a, a basic meditation, ways to uh, uh, be able to use these in a practical manner. And I mean, your work, I mean, whether people want to say it or not, your work is a prerequisite for all kinds of uh, magical lodges out there, whether you be them of, of the left-hand path or the right-hand path. And I mean... Well, I've had communications with people I've met over the years that have been Satanists and various black lodges and that. 
And it's interesting, uh, they leave me alone completely. It's like, you know, they don't know where I'm at really, but all of my books are required reading. <laughs> because yeah. Whether you're in the middle path, the left-hand path, or the right-hand path, I mean, astral projection, and energy work, they are things that everybody does. But energy Absolutely. work, energy work is key for Kundalini. You cannot raise Kundalini unless it happens spontaneously, and that's like one in ten million people. Uh, but to actually raise it, um, you absolutely need um, body awareness, tactile imaging. That's the secret. That's the key, because it puts you in touch with your energy body, with chakras, and you can move energy through your body. And of course, to raise Kundalini, you have to move a lot of energy into the base chakra, because all chakras have um, two major abilities. There's lots of lesser ones, but they have the ability to uh, transform energy into different values of energy and to move energy to other chakras and that <clears throat> throughout through different meridians. Another ability, which is key for Kundalini, is that it acts like an electrical capacitor, an electronic capacitor, in that if you pump a lot of energy into a chakra, uh, it will start to fill up. And when you get enough energy in there, like a capacitor, it will strobe, which is my term, and it will release all of that energy in a massive flash. And this release of energy, in regardless of the chakra, flash activates a lot of very heavy-duty circuitry and connections that did not exist a moment before and will not exist later because they're energy dependent. This is like all of a sudden you've got superhuman energy body abilities appear while you have enough energy to do it. Now, mm -hmm. if the brow chakra, the third eye strobes, you get a massive, brilliant flash of light in the mind's eye, which you will see with your eyes closed or open. And this is like a giant camera flash going off at point blank range. And you get a feeling of concussion over the whole facial area. It's like you've been hit with a pillow really hard in the face, but without the hitting part, you just feel concussed. Now, yeah. most people, when they get that, they put two and two together. A really bright light happened, and I felt this impact. They put two and two together and come up with seven. They said, I must have been hit by a demon or something. <laughs> so they, ter they terrify themselves. What you've had yeah. is a... Well, I've had 15-year-olds had this happen to them and are doing nothing but relaxing, and it just happens. Um, obviously, they have a very active brow chakra. I mean, I don't know what they were doing at the time, maybe whatever, <laughs> watching TV or something, <laughs> but, uh, to cause that amount of energy to come through. But some people are just naturally wired that way and that they are, it's going to happen. Now, if you know what you're doing and, and you know what's happening, you can... Um, nurture that over the years, particularly in a young person, and give them necessary training and counselling and help for them. Uh, if you don't, if you are in the Western system um, and you rely upon medical doctors and things like that, you'll probably eventually be classed as schizophrenic or something or psychotic because, um, you know, there's a fine line between madness and genius here. Um, and Kundalini will drive you insane if you don't have the right understanding and grounding and know, know what's happening because the onslaught of impressions, empathic, psychic, telepathic impressions can be very difficult to handle if you don't have some advice. And uh, yeah. as I said, I was lucky to uh, have done this and I was lucky that I didn't know much about it at the time I did it. I'd read a few pages out of an old spiritualist book. We didn't have the internet in those days. And um, I didn't know, according to the modern traditions, when you get that big flash of light in the brow, brow center, that's it. You're Kundalini raised. You're done, pal. You're the finished <laughs> item. And of course, no, I didn't know that. Now, I had a massive Kundalini spike. I'm talking life-threatening. Very painful. It was like putting 400 volts of electricity up my uh, spinal cord. And wow. I honestly thought I was going to die. Now, after that happened, um, the I didn't know that that was supposed to be it. 
So I continued with the exercise once I'd recovered a bit from that. And about 30 minutes later, my Kundalini actually arose. And when Kundalini rises, it is exact, the sensation is exactly as if it would be if a physical snake as thick as your wrist forced its way through the perineum, which is the flat area between the anus and genitals, mm -hmm. forced its way up inside of you, you don't want to be homophobic. It's a bit uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> and forced its way through your intestines and torso in three and a half coils clockwise and then up through the neck and out of the head. And then as it comes out of the head, there is a heavy energy that is like, it's like a four pound stake that comes out over the brow and down over the face, pointed onto the nose area, exactly like the shape of a cobra's foot in a rampant cobra. And so if you have that sensation happen to you, you will think, that's, how do you describe that? You're going to say, a cobra moved up inside of me and the big cobra hood came out here. And this is how thousands of years ago, Kundalini has been related to the cobra. Now, sadly, there are some authors out there that have written books on the symbology of Kundalini and how this, what the symbolism means and all that. But it's not mm -hmm. symbology, it's an actual physical sensation. And a lot yeah. of this ancient knowledge, when you actually do it, you'll find it's not symbolic, it's physical sensation. They're actually giving you quite a lot of information from texts that are thousands of years old. And like ancient pictures of chakras and things like that, if you look at them from ancient China in the uh, ancient Taoist magical system, um, that's probably the most accurate you're going to get of actually getting a picture and description of a chakra of the deeper level. Now, if you look yeah. at the heart chakra, for example, what does that look like clairvoyantly? Well, there's levels and levels of clairvoyance. On the surface level, just beyond a bit of auric sight, you'll see like a, a bright light there. It might be an intense green. And if you get to see the chakra, the spinning wheel of light, which is one level down from that, you'll see this sort of messy, spinning, greenish sort of movement here. But that's just a light being produced by the chakra. That's not the chakra. Now, if you clairvoyantly go deeper and you see the actual chakra, it's mind-blowing. It's not green. <laughs> <laughs> what you see, you see a hexagram very, very clearly. You see a hexagram and you see 12 petals, like little flower petals. They look like petals around the outside. And there's 12 of them. I've counted them. And on the inside of this hexagram in the center there, you find there is a Sanskrit letter symbol there. Sanskrit. And also I find you have a little deity image that could be about like that big. It's small. That uh, could be there or there. You know, it could be in, in various places in there. I really don't know what all of these mean. Wow. Uh, but I can theorize from that because these the chakras contain Sanskrit letters, the Sanskrit alphabet must have been based upon chakra observations. It can't be the other way around, because why would a Western person, completely Western, <laughs> uh, have this symbology and this lettering symbols and other things inside of the chakras, which are definitely Eastern looking of origin. And the color of the heart chakra is the color of smoke. You get the color of thick smoke going by you. That is the color of the heart chakra at the real level. And uh, and then you start to understand, as you would already know, that you know symbols have power. And a symbol can generate an energy. But an energy can also generate a symbol, the reverse place. So if you have the energy, you can generate the symbol, the reverse. So I'm sure you would have come through that in your magical training. If not, I need uh, to write, rewrite one of those books. <laughs> I'm, I'm magical <laughs> training. I'll probably get to that one day. Um, that is that is amazing in-depth detail that uh, I'm sorry, that <laughs> very few people have. No, I love I'm that. Detailed, I'm a detailed guy. It's like you ask me a question, I like to go down to the nth degree on that. And, of course, it can be a bit time-consuming. And then a story comes up here and then the experience... At, 
Yeah. Hey, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have it any other way. That's that's the beauty of it, man. <laughs> I, I love it too. I, I love being me, and I love the work I do. I mean, if you read, uh, if, you've, if you've read my books and seen my progress, particularly my books, uh, which I recommend you get all of them. Yes. You are. It's um, and if you think you're doing this program, particularly get energy work. Yeah, get them all. <laughs> I love if, energy work. If you I read my uh, books, you know me. Because there's yeah. a lot of my personality in, in my writing and my voice. And this is what I do 24-7 and have done my entire life. I'm thinking about these things. I'm working on these things. It relates to every aspect of my life, including diet and health. Yeah, you've, uh, you've applied yourself to a – it's a narrow field of study, but you've, you're so embedded in into it. I mean, you're – you're an expert into it any way that you look. And then you complement that with hands-on experience in the field, in the trenches. You've been there. You've done that. And, and you've, yeah. you've, uh, you've found the successes and the mistakes. Uh, and luckily, people can learn from your mistakes in uh, getting this course. And, uh, you know, I, energy work, I agree. That is that is definitely a... That's probably my favorite. In fact, I had it sent to my girlfriend here about three weeks ago. Uh, I said, you got to get this one. This one's a prerequisite to anything that you do. It doesn't even matter where you're at right now. You need to go back and reinforce your foundation with uh, the tactile imaging that you put in there. I mean, there's so many applications for that. And well, out of curiosity, the oh, go ahead. Work, the fundamentals of the energy work, the body awareness tactile um, imaging system, is the missing link from ancient Eastern knowledge and all Western work based, based upon that. This is a missing link that didn't translate. Now, you can apply en the energy work that I teach, the tactile imaging, you can apply that to Tai Chi, Qigong, martial arts. You can apply it to all forms of magic and witchcraft. You can apply it to anything. You can apply it to healing. You can apply it to medicine. You can apply it to anything. That, I mean, it has a million uses. This is a missing link. It's so fundamental. It's like breathing if you're going to do something like this. I mean, whatever you do, even on the left-hand part, you find it will make everything work better. You know, and you hit it. I mean, that's, that is what I love about this is because you can apply it to every fucking part of your life. Uh, and you just hit it, whether it's, it's magic, it's healing, it's, a uh, endless, endless paths of, of application for this. And, uh, even relationships, even relationships and business, I mean, in relationships. Now, <clears throat> if you apply body awareness, energy work to your own genitals, you will cause massive stimulation on the genital chakra level without physically touching yourself. Now, I've saved many marriages with this over the years. Now, you also can, you will find with a little bit of practice, you can exteriorize your body awareness, hands, outside of your body, and you can actually put those inside another person and actually stimulate their energy body. So if you are with your partner, if you exteriorize your body awareness, and if she does the same, in the genital area, so you get it's like a mutual stimulation going there. That's yeah. nu that's nuts. <laughs> I mean that <laughs> that can be used to trigger kundalini if you were following a tantric path, you know, using mm -hmm. tantric sex and magic for that sort of thing. But it's brilliant. I've had a lot of uh, I've experimented over the many many years with this, um, with people have approached me with bad marriages and sexual problems and that sort of thing, and that I that is a valid form of healing is coming up you have just healed a marriage through some simple tips and tricks and techniques that nobody else will tell you um i mean i've even used body awareness to years and years ago um i used to get these checks coming from my publisher and i was really poor at the time it might be christmas and i mean i need that money for christmas or my kids are not getting any presents so normally they want to hold put it on hold for like eight weeks before i can get it cleared but I found that if I approach the right teller, a, a female, and I'd sort of sense out which one and try and time it, it was a you know, sensitive person. And 
while they are looking at the new account and stuff like that, they've got the check there. It's all good. I mean, it's not going to bounce or anything. But I just distract her with a little bit of body awareness going into her mind with a little thought form to distract her and, and get her attention elsewhere. And uh, and before you know it, I've distracted her and she's forgotten to tick that little box that says put on hold. And I'll leave there, bang, tell the machine, hey, kids, we're having Christmas this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got, to be oh, careful, you've got to be careful with that, though, because, I mean, a, a couple of times I've had uh, tellers um, actually um, half collapse on the counter having an orgasm because I overdid it a bit. <laughs> it's... Uh, not that they complained. I mean, they said, oh, I just felt a bit faint. It must be the weather, you know. But I, I know exactly what was happening. I'm going, oops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I'd give anything to be there to see that going down. That'd be classic. Yeah, I mean, try it yourself. It, it's pretty easy. You just got to pick the right person. It's, uh, I mean, technically that's yeah, immoral, unethical, whatever it is. But it was harmless. <laughs> it really is harmless. And, yeah. I mean... I mean, you could, if you're a nasty person, use this sort of ability. You'd have to work it out, but you could probably use it to harm people. I mean, hey. Oh, I'm if, sure. If, if you are honest with this, I mean, everything is a two-edged sword. I mean, healing, Absolutely. healing, for example, if you can project effective levels of healing energy to help people, you can use exactly the same technique to harm people. You just change the intention of that. So you're projecting healing out, and normally you're healing a person, maybe distance healing, but if you change your intention and want to harm that person or influence that person, that energy will still flow, and it will have that effect. So everything is a two-edged sword, and it ne you need to be aware of that because once you start gaining some body awareness skills, particularly with Kundalini, it's like mm -hmm. almost like having a carrying a gun around with you. Your imagination and your body awareness, you have to take more care with them because you have to realize this, uh, because you can affect other people uh, with these abilities, because particularly with race Kundalini, you've got a lot of energy there, and it's like you've got, uh, you can seriously, you know, mess with people with that level of energy. Um, fortunately, most people that um, would do that uh, tend to be a bit psychotic, and they, um, because they've got issues, and if you yeah. raise Kundalini without first dealing with those issues, then, then you are going to get Kundalini psychosis because you haven't done your groundwork. You haven't done what every spiritual teacher in the world has said. You know, it's like it comes down to man, know thyself. Go within, get to know yourself, you know, tidy things up. And if you've got a problem, fix it. Work on it. Yeah. Get some, go see a psychologist. Get some help. Work on this. And... Uh, and because you need to do this sort of thing to prepare for Kundalini, because do not make the mistake, which I've had a lot of people approach me over the years, and they seriously messed up. And they think that if they can just do enough yoga and raise Kundalini, once they've raised Kundalini, it's all going to be good. They're going to ascend and float away with the theories over their coffin, maybe. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a good way to kill yourself. Uh, if you, I mean, <clears throat> As opposed to this, I mean, I've had people at live workshops have full raised Kundalini in on the second day of a workshop, and I've had several people wow. do that. Now, some of these people have never, ever done any meditation or energy work, nothing, before the workshop. They were complete newbies. One guy was a mature man, 45. His favorite interests were the, uh, the football and the baseball, and, you know, went to work. He was a good man, very stable man, and a nice guy. He didn't really have any spiritual desires or ambitions. He just lived his life. And now he says every couple of months he raises Kundalini again because it's just really cool. Hey, I've got a pet snake inside of me. That's cool. And, <laughs> and he gets some visions and stuff, and he likes that. But, I mean, you can raise Kundalini. And this guy is obviously wired that way. I mean, just naturally born that way but very psychologically stable too. And he doesn't, he chooses not to do anything with it. And that's okay. You don't have to do anything with it. I mean, yeah. if you do this. But this man, whatever his interests are, you will find genius appearing and talents appearing in accordance with your own 
natural interest and talent that you already have. You know, Kundalini will flow into that and enhance those abilities. If you're a scientist, you will start getting genius ideas. Uh, if you're an artist, your artistic level will leap up to a much higher level. Uh, if you're a musician, same thing. You become, you get these brilliant ideas for songs and, you know, musical riffs and things like that, and you become like, I don't know, another Freddie Mercury or something. And uh, yeah. that's Kundalini. Now, Kundalini is, is not really, you could say, a spiritual thing. There's another word for it. It is, it is more of a, <clears throat> a social, spiritual, um, a social, spiritual evolution that occurs that takes you to a higher level. Now, there are many levels of Kundalini up to a very, very high level. I remember when I did my first round of Kundalini and I was doing it like once a week for like a year, I was sitting in my mother's house alone. I had the house to myself. I had fully raised Kundalini <clears throat> up to the Medusa effect and the snakes coming out of your head and I'm in the full on state where the walls of my room, which I could see through my closed eyelids, were torn away and I was floating in space with this wow. form. And I've got full God consciousness and I've got full creative abilities. I mean, if I wanted to manifest physically a two-headed blue goat in my living room, it would have physically appeared there. Um, and I'm... I'm doing this and I'm thinking to myself with a bit of a, a giggle in the back of my mind. <laughs> I said, here's me. I've done all this stuff. And I think I've got about $2.50 in the bank. And I'm wondering where I'm going to get my food from for the next couple of weeks. I think Monday I'll visit my sister Teresa. Tuesday I'll go to my sister Jenny's. Wednesday I'll go to so-and-so's. And, -so's, and you know, I'm planning my week out for visiting. But, um, <laughs> but at, all the, at, at the same time, I would not have swapped this for all the tea in china i mean it's just so precious but oh then God, yes. then an angel one day appeared to me and said robert we need to talk you need to learn how to write uh, well i left school after grade eight and even though i've always been a bookworm and avid reader i mean i couldn't i literally did not know the difference between a verb and an adjective I had to read, I had to look it up a hundred times and write it down. And I, I nearly copied the whole Webster dictionary, the big two volume set out. I mean, I copied half of that out by hand. Um, all about grammar and things like that and punctuation and spelling and all that. And I taught myself to write up to like university level in about 12 months. Probably less. Wow. Probably about nine months to university to publishable level in about that time. And that was when I started writing Astral Dynamics, and I was teaching myself to write while I wrote that, the first edition. Jeez, wow. So that's I an mean, example what a testament. Of how Kundalini works through you. In whatever you're doing, it will work with what you're thinking about and focusing on, regardless of what that is. Yeah, the question is, why would anybody not want to do this? I mean, the, the possibilities that are that are introduced uh, through the system, I mean, are endless, and, and you can apply it in whatever endeavor that anybody's, uh, uh, their interests lie, or, or uh, whatever their specialty is. I mean, this is perfect, and... Uh, well, people, the only people who can really, really benefit from raising Kundalini, and as part of the program, of course, mm -hmm. part of the training, you need to learn how to cleanse your belief system and get rid of all beliefs that are not based on actual personal experience in fact and you need to you do a lot of housekeeping on the inside because um let's say the average person is probably 95 percent bullshit in their minds i was one of them yeah a master, court, yeah a master me too. taught me how to do <laughs> this and then he taught me how to cleanse my belief systems he said, you need to do this so that your beliefs are based on personal experience because only personal experience will align with actual reality, with truth. Now, yes. every human being is connected to all knowledge in this universe. I'm nobody special. I was lucky. Um, but you're connected to all knowledge in the universe. 
and all music and all science, all art, everything. Now, let's say the example the master gave me, imagine the average person's belief system filter. Your belief system form a filter between you and reality. Imagine the average person's is triangular. And that's your belief system filter. Now imagine that all truth are spherical, orb shaped. All truth is an orb. So in order to download any truth into your mind, it has to pass through your triangular belief systems and it is destroyed or severely damaged in that process. Now once you yeah. clear your belief systems away so they are nice and clear, ideas, genius, music, anything, whatever you're working on, ideas relating to that can just, an orb of truth will float into your mind and take up resonance there like a thought form and then something will trigger that, an association, a piece of music, I mean you'll bump your knee and look at a poster and, and it'll trigger an association and boom, this will explode in your mind, the idea is there, boom. Robert Monroe the uh, famous guy who wrote about astral projection a lot uh, and founded the Monroe Institute in uh, Faber, Virginia, called them rock balls. And similar process, you know, they come down and then you su they need something to trigger them so they explode into consciousness. And when they do, it's like, boom, the idea and all the information with it just surfaces. It's like you finally access that file and up comes the program on that. I love it. <coughs> well, this is you where most of the danger comes from. If, if you mm -hmm. have a lot of misconceptions and falsities in your belief systems and a lot of assumptions, and particularly a lot of religious programming, things like that, uh, yeah. and, and, the, and if you don't see the mind control in the world from the various governments and corporations and advertising, all that mind control we're subjected to, you need to see that and you need to clean the house because if you don't, you can end up, if you raise Kundalini, with a lot of conflict on the inner level here, which can, say, set up a lot of discord. And the result of that is commonly called Kundalini psychosis. And all the problems you get from Kundalini come from this, from the that not uh, having a nice clear set of belief systems. And, um, yeah, and, and, of course, dealing with your any baggage you might have. Within reason, I mean, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be celibate. You don't have to be teetotal. You don't have to be a vegetarian. Mind you, while you're doing Kundalini work, you do need to be vegetarian. Uh, that's like mandatory. You absolutely need to do that because you need, yeah, there's, there's reasons for that. Um, and, but you don't have to be perfect. I mean, you don't have to have like no baggage whatsoever, but you need a really pretty good grip on yourself and to be handling everything pretty well. Um, and then you'll find you could raise Kundalini and yeah, it's going to be a bit of a trip and a bit of a roller coaster ride, but yeah, you'll navigate that pretty easily, particularly with all the tips and tricks and advice I'd give you on what can happen and, and what to do about it. That's, I mean, you, you nailed it. I mean, uh, yeah, if, if you're not prepared, you'll, uh, you'll definitely stumble into an intense existential crisis. <laughs> That's a major brilliant. conflict. <laughs> it's a good way of putting it, yeah. And I've seen people go through this. I mean, I've been through a bit of it myself. I mean, after I uh, did it for like a year, um, and then I had to go through all the possession thing that I ha that happened to me and get over that. So probably about 18 months after doing it, the onslaught of uh, psychic impressions and empath empathic impressions and that I was getting got to the point where you, you start becoming quite agoraphobic because being around lots of people is very unpleasant because you, you know, proximity, you get a lot more of this and you, you feel like you're going a bit nuts. And I had to stop doing everything. I shut down everything apart from light, very light meditation for about two wow. years. And I focused on grounding, on my family, on gardening on just physical things for two years yeah and then when i felt really really <clears throat> stable again i got back into my higher work and uh and this is um what you need to do now th this re relates to what i call the golden rule which is a bit of a cure-all 
And if you apply this to all aspects of energy work with Kundalini, and that is that if you do anything which is uncomfortable or painful or really unpleasant, stop what you're doing and take a break until you feel normal again and then go back to it. And by going back from it, taking breaks, it's very much like weightlifting. You'll find yeah. you work hard until you burn the muscles out and it's painful and you stop. You take a week off and rest and your muscles grow back. They heal and they grow a bit bigger and a bit stronger. And you go back with them forwards like that. And before long, you've got really big, strong muscles and sinews and your joint strength and everything. Your body and your mind will grow. Same thing happens to the mind. You push the mind, you'll find the mind's capacity evolves in gross. And this applies to energy work and Kundalini as well. You really push your limits there and take the right level of breaks and rest periods of time. And then you find all of your capacity on a spiritual level will grow just like your muscles will for a, for a bodybuilder or something. Oh, perfect. Uh, very apt analogy, too. Uh, I agree. I've, I've uh, gone through similar uh, progression like that, and you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, what a perfect little rule because you, you do have to uh, remove yourself when, when you do find that strain and you're, you're hitting that stone wall and – Give yourself time to uh, to come back and and uh, build the appropriate strength to, to tackle it with uh, with new arms. So that's I'm that sure, is perfect. In the I'm sure in your own path, you've had times when you've had to take a break. Absolutely. It's I mean, you sense. can. Uh, yeah, you just got to listen to yourself, listen to your body, uh, listen to your spiritual body, and and uh, know when when you're pushing things a little too hard and. Uh, Regarding the course, I mean, I know you have so many different things that, that you bring to the table, which, which I, I totally respect and love you for. I mean, uh, as far as the Kundalini course itself, does anybody need any prior experience uh, with tactile <clears throat> imaging or, or meditation? Not at all. Um, as I said, I've taught complete newbies, um, and in two days I've had them raising Kundalini. Now, I'm not saying this will be like this for most people. It won't. Sure. Um, but um, what we've done, uh, I've created a part, a separate course, which is free, comes with this program, and we're going to include this with all other courses like that. We created the Essentials program, and this teaches the fundamentals that for the four beginners about uh, body awareness, tactile imaging, and all the stuff you need to know how to achieve an altered state of consciousness, you know, how to meditate, um, all the stuff you need to know as a foundation before you do the course. Now, we've done it in such a way that it's uh, really good for beginners, um, but it's also good as a refresher course for more advanced students as well because there's stuff in there, you, you know, you might have missed along the way. And uh, so that's the essentials. It's in there. And we, we separate it from the main course. So... We, I didn't want to clutter the uh, the main course up with too much information because when sure. you add the essentials to this, it got start to get really quite big. And um, I know the value of you know too much information is uh, uh, can be counterproductive. So you trim it down a little bit and you know give it a better structure, and you'll find it all works better. But yeah, it's suitable for complete beginners. If you've never done anything before, you can start with the essentials and work your way up. And uh, because in the main program, even if you're an advanced energy worker, there's a lot of new stuff in there and much more advanced techniques, uh, of course, uh, which of course you need working up to. I mean, the you may know the what I call the plank technique. Uh, and then we go to the two tubes technique and the macabre technique, how to create the macabre light ship and things like that. Oh, I thought I'd throw that in. It does relate to Kundalini. And, um, and various other things. But you take the, those techniques to a, a higher level um, and, um, you know, because they're useful for Kundalini uh, work. Um, but you need to be very well practiced at energy work uh, to, uh, to really do Kundalini. And this is most people. You, you're yeah. gonna get, you're going to get these people, like I, I often get this, I get 15-year-olds that come along uh, pick up my book or a text and they skim to the technique and they read through a couple of pages of that and they sit down, five minutes later, and they have a full-blown OBE or something. And they say, oh, that's <laughs> easy, easy. 
And then most people, of course, spend a year or two working on it regularly and they get really frustrated. And people like yeah. that just, just make you sick. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't get it yeah, wrong. That's... I mean, I had a huge amount of experience when I was a child from, you know, even before I was born. I mean, my memories go back to before birth. Um, and there's a technique you can use to uh, do that. Anybody can do it. It doesn't mean I'm special or anything. Well, I am special, but you know, it's like <laughs> anybody yes, can you do are. it. But uh, just because, um, so, but you forgot what I was saying now. Just wait. Memory is a, <laughs> memory is a funny thing, it really is. You know? Yes. Yeah, Sometimes things on, are so fleeting. <laughs> yeah, particularly on hot days and that. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I've had complete beginners in that uh, Grace Kundalini. I've also had people I've met uh, who have been like, one lady was an advanced Aikido master, you know, who'd been teaching Aikido for like 20, 30 years. And, uh, you know, they do a lot of energy work, so she was very advanced. And I, I was introduced to her in a waiting room of a, a naturopath. They arranged it. And I only had 30 minutes. I had a plane to catch. So I met up with this lady and I said, look, we haven't got much time. I told her the basics and I said, right, I'm going to show you and I'm going to walk you through this. Put your hands out. And I start with that. And then I go to the feet and the legs and the arms and a few other things. And a few minutes later into the chakras and that. And like 30 minutes later, she had a full Kundalini rising in front of me. Once she got it, we start working on the base chakra. Full circle. And wow. She was sitting there, like, drooling and saying, what do I do now? I said, best of luck, love. I've got a plane to catch. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, darling. Good luck, I'm out of here. <laughs> she was okay. I mean, I've got my friend to look after her. I told him what happened before that. So I'm, I'm not cruel, but I, I do like to get a laugh out of it. It's like tickling. You live now, longer a... if you laugh. Yeah, I agree. I, laughter is, is the key to uh, immortality. And uh, what's it like from your perspective when you're watching somebody have a Kundalini uh, experience? Can you feel it? What kind of uh, subtle changes do you notice? Well, I've got quite a bit of clairvoyance, particularly if I'm in a relaxed state. And uh, in a situation like that, it's like giving healing. I can put myself into a deep altered state in five to ten seconds because when you are doing something with this, your higher self, rises up inside of you uh, and boom helps you do this it's a, a entrained action so yeah um i watched this happening i could see the energy moving i could see the massive releases of energy in the chakra stripes stripes clairvoyantly and I, I i see it happening and i know what's happening it's massively rewarding now there was also i am aiding this it's a little bit like the shakti pat thing but you have to understand that um if you put it this way if you spend a lot of time with me close up in person or you will have become psychic you'll start having obes and visions and eventually you'll raise kundalini without doing anything because the associate it's like two tuning forks you can strike one a big tuning fork and you bring another one next to it before long they're both resonating strongly in the same pitch it's like that um so yeah. hanging around somebody uh, that can do something, uh, some skill, whether it's astral projection, Kundalini, or whatever, it does in a way, as the old saying goes, it rubs off, uh, whatever that skill is. Very true, very true. I know uh, exactly what you mean. And it's, mm -hmm. That is an amazing uh, <laughs> phenomenon itself. You know, it's so easy. And, uh, it's where you get the guru thing. I mean, literally, if you go to India yeah. and you go to one of the guru types, uh, over there and you find there's like a million people camped out around their ashram or tent or whatever they got and as they walk down the road there's people reaching out trying to touch their feet because they believe that most of the energy of a of a guru is in the feet but with the guru thing they even they take on students the students try and spend as much time with the guru as possible because there is this what i call a charismatic transfer of energies you know the stronger energy will affect the the less stronger, less strong energy, the weaker energy, and it will start to resonate on a similar sort of a level. And that's how the guru thing works. I mean, a guru could be deaf, dumb, and blind, 
and just sit there in a room with his students and never do anything. And they would all evolve just by sitting in the room with him. It's kind of that, uh, that, that energy acclimation uh, to kind of seek it out. Yeah, that's great observation. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of these things you don't really kind of think about until so you sit down and observe them. <laughs> it is. That's I mean, perfect. I think about the damnedest things. I mean, I spend a lot of time thinking. I mean, I can barely, what, I'll occasionally watch a movie, but I mean, at the moment I can't even listen to music. I mean, I need silence or I need people like you. Yeah. To talk to mm -hmm. because yeah I, ne I need to learn and the best way for me to learn it's a hunger is to talk to you mate because when I'm talking to you or talking to a class there is this connection between us and when I'm yes. talking I'm taking notes because some of the things that I'm saying and thinking I've never thought before I've never said before and I'm getting explanations for things given to me while I'm talking, it just appears in your head. You get that smooth download of what I call grace comes through you and all these ideas and answers come out here, which I've never considered before. So I often take notes during my own talks and presentations when I'm talking to people. It's the best way to learn. I mean, this is where how, how I realized this decades ago, and uh, this is how I've learned a lot of stuff by talking. Because you can get so much on your own, you know, meditating in that, but you need that interaction with people um, to get that flow going down through you. It's, it's difficult to explain. I call it grace. And it's no, you, you just you just hit it. Oh, you absolutely hit. It. I'm the I'm the same way. I love having deep existential conversation like this because yeah. not only will something that uh that the partner I'm speaking with maybe trigger something, but as I'm trying to uh, find a way to communicate my own understanding, I'll do just like you said, I'll download a, a perspective. Something will hit me that I never thought of before. And it's, yeah. it, it just uh, reinforces or, or reconstructs a false understanding that I had before. And I'm like, oh, holy shit. <laughs> the, the beauty here, Nate, is when you understand how this process works, now if you don't understand how the process works, you start creating a religious belief. Because Absolutely. To know, fill in the gap. You, yeah. you fill in the gap with assumptions and all of a sudden you've got spirit guides running around with little pieces of information and you, you create this whole cosmology above you which is necessary to support that personal experience because what you do here, you, you lose your way because um, you haven't cleaned your belief systems and that and you've got all this stuff to choose from. It might be this, might be that. Yeah, I bet it's this and I bet it's that. And before you know it, you started a new religion, and you're leading millions of people aside. <laughs> I mean, when, <laughs> Absolutely. When get, it's true. When you get out of body, and I mean, when I first started getting out of body as an animal and that, I expected to find spirits flying around everywhere and all this stuff and this sort of hierarchical stuff going on with, you know, this like organization happening, this whole cosmology. And I got out there, and it's like really quiet, and I could hear the wind and the rain and... And I heard my dog snoring, and it's just really quiet. And he's like, I'm not saying there's nothing there, but it's generally very quiet. There's not what you'd expect to find out there. And then I discovered that, hey, we we create most of these beliefs ourselves, or people create them. We just take it on board because it sounds yeah. That famous saying, oh, that resonates with me, you know. So they take it on board and choose to believe it. They're chosen beliefs. Not my right. personal experience. Every master has said the same thing. Proceed in the footsteps of your own personal experience. Every master, every holy book tells you this in some way or another. And this is how it is. And the master explained to me, he said, this is the path of the master. It has always been this way. It will always be done this way because there is no other way. It is that Absolutely. you... You can learn so much from books or get you so far, then you've got to throw them away and start remembering. You've got to start connecting with that flow of information because that is the path of the master. You're expected to remember how to do this. Uh, you're expected to remember how to astral travel, how to do this, how that. It just starts, it is like remembering. It just starts coming back to you. But you are downloading from the collective consciousness, which is the universe. 
That, that is the beauty of it. I mean, uh, and I love how going back, even people who are really uh, magically apt or have uh, years of experience, being able to go back and rebuild your foundation with a lot of the, the missing pieces that you brought to the table, it reinforces everything uh, indefinitely more valuably. Uh, and I have this course in front of us, man. I'm stoked. I'm absolutely I mean, stoked. You guys. I'm really <laughs> excited. I've waited so many years to share this information. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't be here if it, doing this now if it wasn't for Timothy. I'd still be thinking about, oh, I should have wrote the book or not because, well, this is really over the top. People aren't going to believe this. They're going to think I'm nuts or something. But it's like, this is. Working through it all over the last two years and, you know, extracting all the little bits and pieces and structuring the videos and doing them and then getting the downloads and rewriting it all. And, um, it's like it's been really uh, hugely rewarding to consolidate this knowledge and then to, to be able to share it to people uh, and oh, yeah. uh, give people access to it. Because it does come down to my way of saving the planet, of helping humanity, because... I thought long and hard about that. I mean, there are things that I could do that could help the planet, but even even if I astrally possessed world leaders and stuff like that, there's too many people. There's too much corruption. It's, not, it's a drop in the bucket. You couldn't do it. There's nothing you could do but this. You said it. If you, the more people that raise Kundalini will change the energy levels, the vibrations of the planet, of, of our species, will, and will, will help us to, you could say, evolve into a higher level of, of civilization, maybe to get through that little window which we need to get through to get to, to become a type one civilization. And there's no other way of doing it. And the master sits there nodding wisely. You just have to, even in the civilization, you have to remember how to do this. And people need to wake up. They need to become conscious. Because most people are fooling themselves when they believe they're spiritually aware and conscious. Because they're not. Absolutely. You're, you're just following your programming. <laughs> yeah, there's so much. Uh, I mean, it's, it's all Maya out there, the grand illusion. And uh, you are, I mean, on that grand scale that you talked about. So you're not just being the one drop in a bucket. What you're doing is beautiful because you're putting these immensely powerful keys in, in so many people's hands so that they can unlock the door uh, to that true infinite aspiration of uh, attaining um, all that is, that is highest out there. And it's, it's rewarding. Well, it is rewarding. About, one thing about this program as well, I have a... Um, a, uh, a community uh, website as well, which is astraldynamics.org. Well, I've got a um, uh, that's where my forums are, big forums there and stuff, and website. But um, we're going to set up a, a forum for this program on the um, um, on the um, on the program itself, so people can post questions and that, and be ways of getting to me. But this program will also be evolving as well as we go. I mean, as we get questions and more problems and, and you know, solutions and that kind sure. of thing, these will be added to the program. Uh, we'll make more videos and put up some documents on that. This is how you deal with this and that. Because I've only had relatively a small spectrum of people to work with um, over the years, you know, mainly myself and a few other people and family. So when you start getting hundreds and thousands of people coming, you're going to get this, you're going to get that, which you haven't come across that before. Let's work this one out. And uh, this is what lights my fires, mate. It really does. I mean, the voyage of discovery is like just priceless. Oh, it is. It is. Uh, it's perfect. It's perfect in every way. And there, and uh, for me, that's that's why I'm so passionate about it. It is the the ultimate aspiration to go out there and, and keep pushing the envelope and and uh, unlocking that that a uh, true highest potential that that we're all uh, capable of of uh, achieving and pursuing and 
to touch upon a few things that this course has. I mean, you bring things to the table on this that that nobody has, and and some of the some of the aspects that are included in this is that you get into the uh, the real anatomy of uh, the human energy body. You talk about proven techniques for igniting your own kundalini release. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about how to strobe the major chakras. Give instructions for controlling the clairvoyant vision screen that appears after that's, the awakening. That's a thing. That's, that's <laughs> because clairvoyance, astral projection, I've got bits on astral projection in there as well because that's a side effect of kundalini. So is clairvoyant. Everything works together. This is your energy body. These are abilities of your chakras. So it all applies. Absolutely, all, all, uh, all intertwines. Abs and that's that's the beauty of how it all culminates in the in raising kundalini and everything that can stem from that. And Robert, I thank you. I thank you, man, for for jumping on with me for this evening and and just uh, giving me a preview about the. Uh, whole contents of the upcoming course I am excited I'm, I'm probably gonna be one of the first few people to be getting this course myself so Yay. I'm gonna I'm gonna be jumping on it man I'm gonna I'm looking forward to diving in and applying what you brought to the table and incorporating it in my own practice and uh, being able to learn how to raise Kundalini uh, voluntarily so thank you man thank you for bringing this to the table thank you for for making it available to people uh, I can't thank you enough. And you're most welcome. I mean, it is such a pleasure to work with people who are actually going to do the work. Now, yeah. all, it's also fine. There's a lot of people who are just knowledge hounds. They want to know all about this stuff. They don't want to actually do it. They just want to accumulate that's, the knowledge. That's cool too. Hey, that's, that's fine. Yeah. 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 But to uh, to actually be able to. Uh, get out of the armchair and and apply what what you've learned that is the beauty in it and and uh, you give people that opportunity to do this to to make a a practical application with this that it's that it's not something just for uh, armchair theory and uh, man it's it's coming out december 18th and i know that if if people sign up on the astral dynamics website there's a there's a twenty percent discount, so I urge everybody to go subscribe to Astral Dynamics and keep an eye out here next month for when the uh, Raising Kundalini course is is uh, made available. And uh, I will be giving everybody my own personal review as I go through because I'm excited to jump in and and get hands on working with this. So this is gonna be great. And uh, Thank you, man. Thanks for thanks for not only going over the course tonight, but but jumping into the uh, inner astral mechanics of of uh, all different types of spirituality tonight. It's it's been a fun talk, and uh, yeah, my pleasure, Mike. It's always yeah. fun talking about Kundalini. It's oh, even, even more fun doing it. <laughs> I, I definitely believe that, and uh, I will be I will be jumping on like everybody else. LB, so Robert, it's very serious. Yeah. It's like oh yeah. yeah. It's a very serious thing. It's not like a, a light thing to do. It's very, very profound. Yeah, and you, you really went in, in depth into, uh, I mean, just how this will awaken all your latent faculties, whatever it is that you're interested in, whatever your endeavors are in. Uh, you'll unlock that and you'll connect it with your higher self. And you'll just be a conduit uh, for the limitless knowledge that can pour into that aspect. So that's... That is the beauty of, of, of Kundalini. And uh, thank you. Thank you again for bringing that, man. And, and You're uh, welcome. And with I you again soon, man. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk again soon. Definitely. Well, have a good night, Robert. And I'll, uh, I'll catch up before too long. Ciao, Thanks man. again. Have a good one.